This is the Mi 9, Xiaomi's latest masterpiece and flagship. Contrary to the transition from the Mi 6 to the Mi 8, the company has been brave enough to finally get a bit more playful with the design of the Mi flagship series and made more changes. Let's dive right into the review for all the details. Starting with a closer look at the design, I have to say that the Mi 9 is a real pleasure to look at and does certainly look more extravagant than its predecessors. The design is a lot more colorful and that isn't only because of the popping main colors the phone is available in, but also due to its holographic back glass which depending on lighting shows a multitude of different colors that along with the reflective finish of the glass make up for a gorgeous looking phone that always looks a tad different than the last time you looked at it. And they also changed the shape of the phone a bit, the rear glass now is curved to all of its sides resulting in a much smoother transition to the metal frame. Also this makes the Mi 9 look much thinner than the Mi 8 even though it boasts the same thickness of 7.6 mm. And then there is the front with this endless screen, once again they cut down on bezels and switched to a more elegant looking water drop notch. The bezel below the screen got a lot thinner and now is only 3.4 mm. Fans of the notification light, don't worry, the Mi 9 got you covered and retained the LED above the screen. So are there any downsides? Well yes there are in fact two of them. The first and most important one probably is the camera module that sticks 2 mm out of the body. Place the phone on a table and it looks strange to say the least. It almost seems like the phone is bent or something and yep of course it also causes wobble when operating this way. The second but mostly minor flaw is sturdiness. Bending the phone is, well, not too hard actually. While this won't be an issue for most users for sure, those of you who tend to carry your phone in your back pocket better get rid of this bad habit. Sitting down on it might cause glass induced pain. So let's get back to the camera module again. As you likely have seen, there are not two but three camera sensors. The main sensor is a 48 megapixel Sony IMX586 with f1.75 aperture. The second sensor is a 12 megapixel unit with f2.2 aperture and 2 times optical zoom. And finally, the third sensor is a 16 megapixel one with an f2.2 aperture and 117 degrees wide angle. Lens. So on paper, the Mi 9 is a huge step forward in the camera department, but what do real life results look like? Let's check it out. The main sensor delivers gorgeous pictures at daylight. Colors look realistic and the dynamic range is quite impressive. And if it fails, though, there is a very usable HDR mode that doesn't cause any shutter delay. The only area where the camera shows a bit of a weakness is the amount of details on distant objects. Those trees for example, it definitely doesn't show as much detail as I would expect, which leads me to believe that the pixel binning doesn't work properly yet. In normal mode, Xiaomi combines multiple pixels to one. Next to reducing the resolution to 12 megapixels, this should also result in a better sensitivity of the sensor. But that's somehow does not seem to be the case and I actually found more evidence for this but more about it later. First let's have a look at pictures that have been taken with the native 48 megapixel resolution. Using this mode is worth accepting the larger file size but not always. The amount of detail the 48 megapixel mode delivers definitely is higher as you can see on those trees again. You also can zoom in a lot more without getting a pixely looking image. However, it's worth noting that the difference is mostly visible on very large screens or when printing large posters. On a laptop or PC screen, not to mention your phone's screen, you won't notice a bit of a difference in most cases.
The only situation where I recommend to exclusively use the 48 megapixel mode for now are night shots. Just look at this comparison. The 48 megapixel shot clearly shows more detail and is a bit brighter. And this also is another confirmation for the fact that pixel binning is not doing what it should since in theory the opposite should be the case. But that is obviously something they can address with a software update. Still, the 12 megapixel standard mode doesn't perform shabby at all when it comes to night shots. It takes surprisingly bright and detailed pictures without any long exposure and the large aperture value appears to pay off big time there. Now if you expect that night mode will improve pictures even further, I sadly have to destroy your dreams. Xiaomi's night mode sucks on the Pocophone F1, it sucks on the Mix 2S, it sucks on the Mix 3 and of course it sucks again on the Mi 9. Yes, pictures look brighter but oh that quality. Awful. If you want to create perfect night shots, go for the manual mode and you will have a lot more fun. You will need a tripod then, but the results are well worth carrying it around. The large aperture and the large sensor really catch a lot of light and reduce the amount of exposure time needed compared to other phones. This picture for example has been captured with 16 seconds of exposure time and the only light source have been a street light and the moon. Considering that, brightness and amount of detail is quite impressive. Next, let's check out the remaining sensors starting with the zoom lens. Admittedly, I was skeptical at first because there is no optical image stabilization, but in reality this doesn't matter. The shutter time is short enough to always capture sharp pictures and another really nice thing is that you can come very close to your subject with optical zoom enabled and the result are gorgeous macro shots that do look stunning. My personal favorite however is the wide angle lens. No matter if it's a landscape shot or a group picture you are shooting, this lens comes extremely handy, getting a lot of stuff on your picture and also helps catching impressions that wouldn't be visible with the main camera. Something Xiaomi did improve a lot is the bokeh mode. It works a lot more reliably on the Mi 9 compared to their previous flagships, especially when it comes to complex situations, the camera handles them much better. The only flaws that remain unchanged is that bokeh mode still zooms in a lot and that bokeh shots in general look much softer and not as sharp and detailed as normal pictures. In my opinion, the cheaper Xiaomi phones for some reason still perform the best in this department. The 20 megapixel front camera takes nice and sharp pictures with a good amount of detail, at least as long as you keep face beautify disabled. The front shooter catches a surprisingly high amount of light as well, despite its f2.0 aperture. There is also a bokeh mode, which despite being AI generated is very accurate even in low light. When it comes to videos, there are good and bad things. Let's first start with the bad things and one of these for sure is the lack of image stabilization. Videos do look quite shaky and despite there being an option for EIS, it doesn't work at least in 4K mode. I really hope they will address this with one of the up and coming updates. Another weak spot is that you can't record videos with the optical zoom lens, instead it uses digital zoom on the main sensor. I have to admit though that due to the high resolution of the main sensor, digital zoom doesn't have much of an impact in terms of quality. Besides of that, the Mi 9 delivers a very satisfying video performance. It can record videos in 4K with up to 60fps and the quality in general is very good. Just the reddish tint is a bit annoying, but that's an issue with pretty much all Xiaomi phones they likely will never get rid of. The audio quality is good for a Xiaomi phone as well, I suggest you check out the dedicated camera test on this channel for a more in-depth look. Slow motion videos can be recorded with up to full HD at 960fps and even though you can only record short clips with that frame rate, the results can look stunning. The front camera unfortunately is limited to full HD at 30fps, 4K or at least full HD at 60fps would have been a nice addition, but nonetheless quality of videos is good. So enough about the camera now, what about performance? Does the Snapdragon 855 deliver according to its promises? Well, yes it does. If you ask me to describe the performance of this phone with one word, insane probably fits best. 
Having a look at benchmark results, it becomes very obvious how far high-end smartphone processors have progressed. The Snapdragon 855 comes very close to the territory of some Intel laptop processors of the Core i5 series and that certainly is impressive considering how small the device is. Using the Mi 9 I essentially can do anything and won't notice a bit of a slowdown even when running unrealistic multitasking scenarios. And even the most demanding Android games out there like PUBG or Shadowgun Legends can be played smoothly at the highest graphic settings with no lag whatsoever. What's quite impressive too is that the phone does get only slightly warm under this type of load, which is a solid proof that the 7 nanometers fabrication of the Snapdragon 855 pays off. Another nice demo of the Snapdragon 855's and Mi 9's performance is editing videos. It hasn't been too long ago when stuff like this was a pain in the ass on phones. However, this has changed dramatically. Just look at this. I am cutting the length of a 4K 60 clip with ease and can export it within just a couple of seconds and that on a phone. Well, you see, I am very impressed with the Mi 9's performance. And even when diving a bit deeper into the specs, the Mi 9 doesn't disappoint a bit. Look at this RAM speed, it reaches a whopping 24GB per second, which is a big step upwards compared to the 13GB per second on the Mi 8. And internal storage isn't a bottleneck either, with a reading speed of more than 700 megabyte per second. Maxing the Mi 9 out, you can get it with up to 12 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. Looking at the sensors, nothing important is missing, gyroscope and compass both work fine as expected. The fingerprint scanner, which now is hidden inside the display on all variants of the Mi 9, is working well. It's not only nearly as reliable as previously used capacitive sensors, it also is nearly as fast. Unlocking the phone with the fingerprint scanner is a breeze and the initial bug where it didn't work under sunlight has been fixed with a recent update. So are there no flaws? Well, there are, but nothing dramatic. What I dislike is the face unlock, which contrary to previous Xiaomi phones is not secure at all. The phone can be unlocked easily using a picture and of course it doesn't work at night anymore because the infrared technology didn't fit into the small water drop notch. And then there is the USB Type-C port. Don't get this wrong, Type-C is great, but on a flagship it should be at least USB 3.0 aka USB 3.1 Gen 1. This one however is a USB 2.0 port which is a bit of a letdown on a high-end phone. What disappointed me a little as well is the lack of stereo speakers, which for example the Mi 6 offered. However, audio quality still is surprisingly good thanks to a much improved speaker. It's insane how much volume and depth such a thin phone can produce with just one speaker. A 3.5mm jack as usual is missing, but you get a Type-C to 3.5mm adapter in exchange. Telephony quality is really good with a clear and loud earpiece and quality microphones. Noise cancelling works very well too. And even reception quality doesn't get in the way. It's as good as on any Xiaomi phone, though I have to say that Xiaomi's claim about the improved antennas is bullshit. I personally haven't noticed any improved reception quality compared to the Mi 8 or other Xiaomi phones. Wi-Fi support didn't change, so you still get AC Wi-Fi with 2x2 MIMO, with very solid data rates and an overall great reception quality. Bluetooth is supported in version 5.0 and easily covers a couple of rooms. NFC users are catered as well with an NFC antenna on the back. And finally, GPS does work great too. It offers dual band GPS and Galileo, as well as single band GLONASS and BDS. Again, reception quality is great and accuracy is as well, no issues there at all. So what's left to mention? Oh yes, software of course. The Mi 9 runs MIUI and honestly, not much to say about this. It's a solid operating system based on Android with a gorgeous UI and many customization options. Some bloatware is there but can be uninstalled and as a matter of fact Xiaomi performs great when it comes to updates, expect them for many years to come. The Chinese version which I tested of course has no multi-language support, but there is a global version which offers a multitude of languages to choose from.
Another thing the Chinese version is missing is white wine level 1, while the global version does support it. So be careful when you decide which version to get. And then there's the last thing to talk about battery life and to be honest Xiaomi's decision to go with a rather small 3300mAh battery wasn't the best. Don't worry, one day of battery life is easily possible but a larger battery wouldn't have hurt though. The quick charge 4 support however makes up for that a bit. The battery is fully charged within 60 minutes and 80% takes less than 30 minutes. But there is a catch, only the Chinese version is delivered with a quick charge 4 charger. If you buy the global version you need to buy it separately. As an alternative for wired charging there also is QI wireless charging support. I tested this using a 10 watt QI pad and it charged the phone within 2 hours. Xiaomi even offers a proprietary 20 watts wireless charger which is even faster but I haven't got one to test. So now it's time for my verdict. I think the Mi 9 is a true flagship and probably the best phone Xiaomi made to date. Considering the pricing of 400 euros in China or for 50 euros across Europe, the value you get is quite remarkable. I also love the design aspect since Xiaomi finally has been brave enough to change the look of the Mi flagship series a bit more. The design is extravagant and the slight rainbow effect on the back is just very interesting to look at. So all in all, I definitely recommend the Mi 9. Anyone who is looking for a phone with up to date specs and a multitude of features at a comparably low price is definitely well catered here and won't find many alternatives at least right now. Do you already own a Mi 9 and want to share your thoughts or do you have any questions? Feel free to drop all of them down below in the comments. If you liked this video I would be very happy to see your thumbs up and maybe even a sub to the channel. Thank you so much for sticking till the end and I will see you guys soon with more reviews. Bye!